Hello everyone. In this section, we will introduce how to calculate learning curve problems and uh, we will demonstrate a different ways to calculate the learning curve through some examples. So learning curve itself basically is a phenomenon that is the time we spend on a repetitive project will be decrease as the number of the repetition increase. Just like we work on any of the assigned job, if it is a repetitive job, that is the first time we work on it, it will take much longer than we work on the tenth or one uh, hundredth time on the on the job. So uh, more important is the learning curve itself is actually predictable. So that makes the calculation of the learning curve become possible. Calculate the learning curve. Two ways to do the calculation. Either we use a table, but where the, the learning rate should be available here. So if our learning curve, a uh, learning rate is available in the table, like 70%, 75%, 80 all the way up to 90, then we can use this table to help us calculate the approximate uh, learning curve result. If the learning rate is not available in the table, then we need to use a formula to help us do the calculation. This formula basically will use the learning rate, where is the R, and use a exponential formula to do the calculation. So let's look at, at an example. Now, it says that uh, production airlines is negotiating a contract for the production of 20 small jet airplanes. The initial jet requires the equivalent of 400 days of direct labor. The learning percentage is 80%. Now we need to estimate the expected number of days of direct labor for the 20th jet, all 20 jets, and the average time for 20 jets. So it is all about 20, but it's all different things. The first one only asks us to take a look at the time we spend on the 20th jet, and part B asks us to look at the time we spend uh, all the 20 jets means from the first jet all the way to the 20th jet. And the last one, we need to calculate the average time to finish these 20 jets. Now, the learning percentage is 80%, which is available if we remember on the table. So we can just go ahead and use the table to do the calculation. Now, let's look at the table here. So we basically have the table which is 80% uh, and uh, we have 20 of them. So we have 20 units and we have the learning rate equals to 80%. Now for all the learning rate we have two numbers which is uh, unit time and the total time. The unit time will be used to calculate the time we spend on the nth unit. And the total time where will give us a coefficient where we can use to calculate the time spent on the total unit from unit 1 to unit n. Now we look at the question. The first one asks us to calculate the, spend, the time we spend on the 20th unit or the 20th air, aircraft. Now we use the first number from the chart, which is the unit time. The number is 0 0.381, which means the time we spend on the 20th unit will be 0 0.381 times that the days, the labor days we spend on the first unit. The first unit will cost us 400 labor days. So we substitute the two numbers here, 0 0.381 times the 400, which will give us a result of 152.4 days. So to finish the 20th aircraft, it will take us 152.4 days. 
Part B asks us to calculate the total time spent on these 20 airplanes. So we need to use the total time coefficient, which is uh, 10.485. So we use this time. It means the total time we spend on this 20 unit will be 10.485 times that the first the first craft's labor labor hour or labor days. So we use 10.485 times 400, which gave us a number of 4,000. 194 days. So this will be the total labor, direct labor days we spend on these 20 airplanes. The last question is straightforward. We just use the total time we spend on these 20 airplanes and divide by the number of airplanes, which is 20, which give us an average labor day we spend on each airplane equals to 209.7. What if that our learning rate is not in the table, which will require us to use a formula to do the calculation. Let's see how to do that. Here, the question asks us to estimate the time it will take to complete the fourth unit of a 12-unit job involved, involving a large assembly of the, if the initial unit requires approximately eight hours for a learning percentage of 72%. Now, the learning rate of 72% is not in the table, which means we cannot use the table to help us do the calculation. So what we need to do is to use a formula. We have given information. T1 is the first unit time, 88 hours, and uh, the learning rate is 72. We have R equals 72%, means it's 0.72. And we are looking at the fourth unit, so n equals 4. We substitute everything into the formula. Now, remember the b itself actually is a result of a calculation. So we need to substitute everything into it, and we got the final time is 19.45. So it will only take us 19.45 hours to finish the fourth unit. Now, sometime that we are required or we need to estimate the right learning rate. If you remember, learning rate itself is something that we should derive from the experiment or we need to derive it from the real scenario. We need to do the observation and figure out what will be the right learning rate for the given process. We cannot just uh, theoretically assume the learning rate is something. So this example basically shows us how should we figure out the right learning rate for a given scenario or given project. So here, what we do is we observe the time we spend on the first six unit. So we took the observation and uh, record all the time we spend on each of the unit. So first unit, 15.9 hours, second is 12, point, 12 hours, third is 10.1 hours, etc. all the way up to the sixth unit. Now, for the learning curve, we know the learning rate will be applied every time when we double the number of unit, which means if the learning rate is 90%, it means the second unit will take 90% of time of the first unit, because from first unit to second unit, one to two, we double it. Then from the second unit to fourth unit, because we double the number, so we double two, we'll get a four. So the fourth unit will take 90% of time of the second unit. So with this given information, we can see, well, for all these double numbers, what will be the corresponding learning rate we can calculate from the real observations? So we have six data, six observations. From unit one to unit two, we double the number of units. So we can calculate the first one, which is T2 divided by T1, 
we can see the calculation gave us a number of 0.755, so roughly 75.5%. So that is the learning rate we can derive from the first two units. And we have other numbers. From 2 to 4, we'll double the number again. So we can do one more calculation. So T4 divided by T2 will be 0.758. Now, it's fairly close to the first one. Now, if we look at these numbers, we have actually another pairs that will double the number, which is from unit 3 to unit 6. Because we double the number 3, will give us the number 6. So we can do one more calculation. So we divide T6 with T3 will give us a number of 0.743. So now from all these numbers, we can see everything is actually fairly close to 75% or 0.75. So we can see, well, based on our observation, we can assume that the learning rate for this problem of this process is 75%.